in a recent video, I shared with you how I use Microsoft OneNote to plan our history and science. And in it, I mentioned that I would do a tutorial. If you didn't watch that video, I will have it linked down below. So do go check it out. OneNote is a free product from Microsoft and it syncs across platforms and devices. When you open up, you will have something that looks kind of like this. In the video, I described um, thinking of each notebook as a, a physical binder that you might have. So here's where you're going to choose what your binder looks like and put in your title. From there, I said, imagine that you have the different dividers. And that's what these sections are over here. And I get a new divider. You're just going to click here on a section. Or you can right click and go to new section. If you want to change these little tab colors right here, you can do that there. If for some reason you want to password protect it, you can do that as well by right clicking. Now from within each divider or section, I said imagine then that you have different pages with your lesson plans on them. And that's here in the page section. And again, to get that, you're just going to hit the plus page or right click it and go to new page. If you need to rearrange the pages in your notebook, it's just a matter of clicking on it and dragging. Whatever you type up here is going to be your the name of your section. So if you need to change it, change the name, you can do that or you can click right, right click and go to rename. So this is what um, a day's plan or a week's planning looks like. So I have what we will read from Story of the World. Anything that's going to come out of the question activity guide, so like the questions and the map work and any possible activity. Supplements are nonfiction supplements that I will use. Um, literature, obviously, any like storybooks or chapter books that we're reading together. Short media is audio or um, video clips that are under about 10 minutes or so. And then I have my long ones, so those are going to be more like my doc documentaries, my Netflix shows, Amazon shows. So well, let me show you how to do that. Um, now the nice thing about this is it's a lot like any other Microsoft program. So if you know how to navigate other Microsoft, you'll be pretty good with this one. So if you want to create a table, you're just going to go to insert and table. To get water columns, you can just start typing in and it will automatically do that. Or you can go here to the little gray arrows and lengthen it and widen whatever columns you need. If you need to um, add more columns or rows, you can do that by right clicking or you can up here. Now, if you are someone who doesn't want to have a table like that, but you do like lined paper, you're in luck. You can go to view and paper style and you can move the, if you're Typing doesn't quite line up, you can move this box around until you get it just the way you want to have it. Before we go any further, let me show you a couple other ways that I've, how I originally planned. So when we started, when we did American Revolution, that was kind of what really prompted me to start exploring this. And you can see this is how I planned it. Rather than doing like day one, day two, I did it by topics. So there would be my topic. And then this, I would just know that this goes along with the, whatever reading we're doing. You can put in maps, and then I would link anything else that I wanted to do. That's kind of what it, I originally looked like, and it worked pretty well for me. I just eventually needed something that was a little more organized. But you can see all of these boxes where you're typing just get moved around. I put in a picture of like the original Treaty of Paris. That was a fun thing to be able to show the kids. You can resize pictures. This is what a page may look like that I've um, listed my resources but haven't placed it yet. I just kind of type them all in. Let's say you have a painting that you want to show the kids. You're just going to copy the image and go over here and Control V, paste it in. And there you go. Okay, so you've got your painting and now you want to be able to show, explore the rest of the little collection on a website. You can control K and put in your 
the website address and now it becomes a clickable image. Or if you would rather not, you can put the image in. You can control K, paste it in. That's how you get your links. If you have something that's an audio, like an MP3, you can paste it in and you're able to play audio from right within it. That, that audio comes from Library of Congress's audio section and I really should do a video on this because there are so many great choices. But you can, some of these can be downloaded but not everything. But it's a great way to find audio even if it doesn't directly relate, but just to give us sound of the era. If you want to link in um, a YouTube video, I just do it the same, I just make a, a, right, a, a regular link. I think then that covers everything that I've done that I do for history. I wanna show you my science one. So this is how I set it up for our physics unit. We used a combination of CPO and Mr. Q's, and he has it divided up into kind of units. So that's what I, I created pages that were kind of a unit, and then sub pages from there. To make something of a sub page, you just make a regular page and then click make sub page. You can see here's where I've put in a PDF. Um, you can either insert a PDF, I don't think I showed you that. You can insert a PDF printout, which is what this would look like, or you can do it as a file attachment. So you can do a PDF printout. You can go to insert file attachment and put it in. And then you, when you double click on it, it will open up the whole thing separately outside of OneNote. So I'm going to show you a couple other quick little things. If you are the type of person who likes to have it to be able to check things off, you can click up here in to do and make a to-do list. So, read chapter one, ask kids to summarize, and then you'll just keep you know, adding it in, and then you can check it off as you go. If you have something that is extra important, you want to make sure you don't miss, you can hit important up here. If you want to make a list of your own questions that you're going to ask your kids, you can click on question and then you'll have a question mark and it's easy to find. And just a few other things. Um, a note for music to listen to, book for books to read. So there's just different things here that you can see. Movies, websites, just to help you visually organize what you're doing. Um, I also want to show you that you can draw with this. Now this on the desktop of course isn't really um, very useful, but if you have a tablet, you can use a stylus and make notes, highlight, etc. And then up here you have your oh, you have your normal formatting things to change font, type, size, bold italics, headings, etc. So that is that. If you like this and would like to see a tutorial on other ways to use it, let me know down in the comments. And if you have any other questions that I didn't answer or anything I didn't make clear, please make sure you comment below and I'll help you out. Thanks for watching.